So YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs. And this is the second edition of Questions from Subs featuring my guy Justin P, the host of KTE Sports Talk. Y'all make sure y'all go subscribe to his YouTube channel and check out his podcast on all podcast platforms. Y'all go show some love, man. If you want to be part of NFL Questions from Subs, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Now, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, and shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. We love y'all. It's always nice to see y'all names on this list over here. So we appreciate y'all big time. But if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. And if you're like, nope, I, no, I don't want anything to do with it then don't go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And it's fine either way. I love you all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. We had some great questions, as we always do. Let's do it. All right, next question came from my guy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, yo, what's good, bro? It's your boy, Flirt Nowinski. So as I, I know this is question from subs, so my question for you today is, bro, how are you and yours? We, we are good. I appreciate you. He said, I hope all is well. Also, I seen a video with you in the head rap and thought with all these injuries, we all lost our minds. <laughs> nah, man. But anyway, he said not to knock Orlando Brown Jr., but as I've said time and time before, Lamar made him look good, right along with Stanley. But it's funny how a way's game-changing plays came against him. Shout out to OBJ, though, because he was part of the mob, and I'll never speak down on him. But yeah, a couple things I noticed. Uh, was that throughout all of Tyson's mistakes, they still stuck with him. And on passing plays, he made a few good blocks. If anybody missed it, even though I already know your answer, but with more time in this offense, do you think he's going to get better and cut down the mistakes? I would say uh, certainly. Um, and what, what I'm hoping happens is with Tyson Williams is that the Ravens take the uh, Alex Collins approach. With Alex, because they, they do a lot of the same stuff. Because not they don't have the same style, but they do the, the same sort of mistakes. They right, give you – every game, they give you a big run. Every game. But then they also have a fumble every game too. This block, something like that. Yeah, man. So um, well, I remember when Alex Collins first came on the scene and then he was making all these big plays, but then he always would have a fumble. Harbaugh called him out. He called him out, but then he also said – he said, hey, we're going to work on that. We're going to try to fix that. And back then I'm like – when, when they had that press after that game, I forgot who they played against, but I'm like, oh, Harbaugh probably just talking. He probably just running his mouth. He, ain't, he probably going to end up benching this dude. But they didn't bench him. They stuck with him, and they cleaned oh, up the fumbles. That was, after, that was after the butt whip we took in London by the Jaguars. I know you talked about Oh, it was that? <laughs> yeah. I ain't going with that vividly. <laughs> but, yeah, I was <laughs> – but yeah, they they fixed him as a Collins fumble. So I hope that with Tyson Williams, they end up uh, doing the same thing. Um, with uh, he oh and he, he continued. He said it was one run in the fourth where he cut it outside, but Murray made a great block. If he would have cut it inside, then he uh, would have hit his head on a goalpost because we have already seen that second gear. But that comes with time and repetition. That's true. Um, also, another thing I noticed was the fact that in key times, Wink was leaving Anthony Averett on an island by himself against Tyreek Hill. Listen, that right there made me want to shed a tear, bro. Not only did he have the confidence to do so, uh, a, uh, Anthony Averett continuously was glued to Tyreek and turned his head around. Yes, we were just talking about that. That's big, man. This is a good thing because it's showing that they actually do believe in him. Uh, somewhat, and we all know about uh, th those Bama DBs and their lack of locating. LOL, shouts out to Ozzy and his people, LOL. Uh, last but not least, zones. Every big play to Travis was while we were in zone, and we all know zones ought to stop the deep ball, which it did, but good lords, the angles and tackling on those plays. Yeah, it was rough. Yeah, that, was, that was atrocious, especially when Travis Kelsey touched down. I'm like, what? Yes. Where? You ain't lying. And he said, we know with the zones, the underneath is what you're going to have open. But they had jelly in coverage, Wink. We are going to fight. <laughs> but shout out to our boys for pulling it out. Oh, yeah, just wanted to let you know. Um, I gave everybody a lot of trouble the whole game, especially the guy beside me that was a Chiefs fan. I knew he was because he had on a Priest Holmes jersey. Uh, but actually, I actually made a friend in the process. He was a cool dude. Uh, Patrick Mahomes didn't read the defense to do his homework and made a terrible pass that was intercepted that lost the game for the Chiefs. 
I had to add that because if that was Lamar, man, they would have dragged my boy through the mud. Oh, yeah, you already know how it goes. He said, peace and blessings to you and yours. Uh, Got to get back to work. Appreciate it, man. So, yeah, this was a lot. Um, this was definitely a uh, a lot to take in. But there, there were a lot of positives, a lot of negatives. But, yeah, they uh, they pulled it out. And, yeah, with, the, with what you brought out about Anthony Averitt, um, so far, so far, so good, man. Yeah. They have been um, talking Anthony Averitt up this offseason. Oh, yeah, he's our third best corner to this and that. And, again, I thought he was going to be traded. <laughs> that's, say that. that, that's what that's so a week. That's a week. Still Jimmy Smith, though. Oh, yeah, that, Jimmy Smith. that's what Wink was they saying. Are, yeah, they, maybe they it was a confidence huh? Yeah. They, oh, I say, I'm gonna go on. Marlon Humphrey, of course, Marcus mm -hmm. Peter, Jimmy Smith, Tavon Young, then Anthony Avery. Oh, <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> so he's in the top. Man. I, I thought when they first said that, when they initially said it, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're they getting ready to trade Anthony Avery. He on the last year of his contract. Right. Uh, they're they getting ready to ship him off. But, you know, and um, they kept him around. And, and, yeah, he got put into the starting role. Again, it was obviously due to injuries, but he got put there. Um, and I think that it – because, obviously, you, your, your play got to be on the field. Um, but I think that – the way that they uh, vocalized about him uh, publicly. Because, um, you know, football is, is, is so much mental, too. Uh, it, it's, exactly. it's, it's mental even more than it can be physical a lot of the times. Yeah, um, so with Anthony Averitt, I think they were just trying to put him in the mental state like, hey, you got this, man. You got this. They were just trying to give him uh, that, that reassurance like, hey, you, you can do this. Uh, because they knew, like, especially when Marcus Peters went down, Jimmy Smith was already down. Um, they knew like, all right, th this dude going to have his work cut out for him from jump. Cause yeah. we, we went against what Henry Ruggs, Renfro. Um, Brian Edwards. Yeah. That's 89 from the Raiders, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then the next week having to go against Tyreek Hill, Demarcus Robinson. Um, oh, who's uh, Brian Pringle. <laughs> Man, so with with that being said, like, yeah, he he needed to have that that confident mindset, and I really think that's what they were doing, uh, when they were really talking him up. So so far, it's been working. Yeah. So now, just gotta continue, man. And he's made big plays in both games. Oh, yeah. Um. So we just we just want to see now. We just want to see consistency, man. That's it. We just want to see consistency. Uh. But yeah, so far so good. Yeah, uh, like I said, he's held his own. Made big pass deflections, breakups. He's coming up tackling. So, you know, mm -hmm. I have no Anthony Eric in place this year so far. So. All right, next question came from my guy, Ricky B. He said, what's up, Engraving? What's going on, Ricky? Crazy dope game against the Chiefs last night. Lamar proves doubt is wrong like he always does. My first question is, how potent do you think we will be with both Boykin and Bateman and when they come back? So how you feel about that? I'll let you start this one. So when when Boykin and Bateman return, how good you think this offense can be? Uh, fourteen points better, honestly. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I know what I say. He's like a uh, a, a far fetched, but no, Rashad Bateman, like I said, uh, granted he had he he hurt that hamstring if I'm not mistaken, but he was wearing our best defensive back out in cat man. Like he was wearing Marlon Humphrey out. Mm -hmm. Stacking them, taking them upstairs. He he's beating them like a drum. He beat both starting corners like they weren't nothing. Like and these are all pro pro bowl guys. Like, yeah, that kid, that kid definitely makes us two touchdowns better, man. Mm. If he's completely healthy. Miles Boykin, he's gonna help us better in the right game. Mm -hmm. you know, he locks his behind off. Yeah. For and sure. I think by his man, year three, he got realized, okay, I might not be here next year. So I gotta come through the clutch. Mm. So I think he will get better, you know, get better too. Then he's a big body, 6'4, 220, 230. So that, that'll help us in the red zone. So instead of LeVar forcing it to Hollywood like he did, just throw a back shoulder fade to either Bateman or. Uh, or uh, the boy. Yeah, man. And like what I you mentioned. One of our, uh, 
crush it from subscribers. I don't know if you remember. It's like last year. They should flex Andrew out wide more for the Red Zone. They toss him up. They should do with Tardy. They did with Dennis Pitta. Yeah. Toss it up. He's six five, six six. I like him over any corner or any safety. I wish they would, man. That that would that would be nice. Try to force the jump on Hollywood true coverage. <laughs> <laughs> I love okay. Elgin, but that one still got me scratching my head. Like what? what <laughs> like what? Tardacious? Were you thinking? I know he throw that. He played like I said. We would even throw that pass man. Mm. Yeah, that that was that was wild, man. But at least it, it worked out in the long run. It, it just shows how much he really trusts Hollywood, man, and and trusts himself too. Because uh, if you didn't trust yourself, you wouldn't make that throw. And if you ain't trust the receiver, you would not throw to him with all those people around him. Um, but with Boykin, yeah, man, he uh, he adds so much just to the run game alone. Because uh, the Ravens have been running the ball pretty good. Uh, so when Boykin comes back, I think that, that just ups their running game that much more. I think he could add like maybe like 30, 40 yards more uh, to the run game. Just from his blocking alone, because he's just this big frame. He's physical as a blocker. Uh, he needs to get around him. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to when he comes back, and hopefully this year, um, he continues where he left off last year, to where he was getting opportunities, just really maximizing his opportunity when the ball did come his way, because he did not really, he hasn't gotten many opportunities uh, over the years, um, but for the most part. Uh, when he does, when, when he catches the ball, he makes something happen after the catch. Uh, so hopefully that continues. Uh, and where Rashad Bateman, he'll definitely, uh, like you said, he was beating Marlon Humphrey. Uh, and if he's doing this to Marlon Humphrey, that's a nice confidence booster for when he does go against other cornerbacks. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I, I can hang with these boys. Yeah. Uh, and um, now his uh his next part of that question, he said, when they do come back. Uh, do you think Bateman will get the start over Miles Boykin? So who do you think will start out of those two? Definitely Rashad Bateman. Definitely. Yeah. Don't take the guy in the first round to have him sit on the pile. Like. Right. That's true. We drafted, we drafted him for a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, you, might and he said more, you might even see more sets before you, uh, before you go in. with him and Sammy outside of Hollywood in the slot. Mm. Oh yeah, that would be something to look forward to too. Real creative. Yeah, yeah, because that that would add another. Uh, yeah, just more weapons to this yeah, offense, yeah. and um, the, this the passing offense has been looking a lot better so far. Um, yeah. and when you you got the potential to add two more weapons, and then. Let me just look through the email. Yeah, and somebody that he didn't even mention who is also going to be coming back on offense, who is a big part of what they do. Oh, Nick Boyle. Yeah, right. of course. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah the, the fact that they're doing this, what, they're, what they've what they been doing without those guys, that's big. Ronnie yeah. Stanley out last night, too. It, like, when you really think about, like, again, and, and we hate to bring it up, but that's what it is. Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, Justice Hill. All out, all, Nick Boyle, all Bateman, Boykin, all out. Stanley was out. You just Tyree Phillips. He's gone. For what that they, was yeah, for what they've been able to do, it's like man, like they still getting this thing done, man. So oh, that's, and it's a Derek Wolf too, right? Yeah, he been out with his back injuries too. I thought it helped with the interior rush game and pass rush when he comes mm -hmm. back. That's true, man. Now, he said our offensive line played great against the Chiefs. Even though they played well, do you think the Ravens will look for more depth at right tackle before our next game? Given, uh, given us, uh, I think we have two roster spots. I think just having a natural right tackle, even though Makari played well, will show up the line and, and give us depth to march into the playoffs. Um, I think that if if they did add somebody, what? Was Andre Smith, was he a right tackle or left tackle? He was a left tackle, right? Uh he played he played left with the Bengals, but for us, he's so he's uh listed as a right tackle. Oh, okay. Well, I, I think that would be the first thing that the Ravens did. I think they will stay in-house first. Um you got Adrian Ely, that's all the practice squad. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Oklahoma, you know, they love Oklahoma Lilas, so 
Mm. They go that route first before they go spend the money like on a Russell Oak or Victor right. Schwartz or exactly. I, like I agree. And then he said, last question: Are the Ravens looking at adding a DB to help with depth? If so, uh, what who would be a good fit? And thank you, Engraving, for taking the time to read and answer my questions. Fifty K subs, here we come. Oh yeah, when we get there, cool. But we 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 got a little while to go for that. Um. I think as far as defensive back, they, they did sign Kevin Seymour to the practice squad. But I think they are – right now, I don't see them really adding anybody because they're going to be getting guys back. Um, he back. He now one, he comes back. Who? Even Marshall. I call him – I say he Marshall. Oh, oh, no, yeah, he, he's done, though. He's done for the year. They put, they, they put him on IR before uh, – before they did the fifty three, so he's done. Him and uh, Khalil Dorsey. Oh wow! Damn. Yeah, they they both done. Um, one one good thing, one positive about Jimmy Smith is that they didn't put him on injury reserve. They didn't even put him on short term injury reserves. And short term is when you got to miss at least three games. But the fact he's that he has not. Been, but he's actually questionable. I guess that was just up to yeah. Time. He probably like, hey, it's not feeling good. Oh yeah. So with Hope Jimmy Smith. It's it's any day now with him, right. yeah. Well, yeah, he could be back for Detroit. Um, so any any time with him, he could come back. Uh, Chris Westry, they did put him on IR, um, so he's gonna be out for a little while. It sucks. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think right now, I don't r really see them making any moves right now. Um, and again, Darius Washington's there too. Yeah. So in in a in a bind in a pinch, they could have him play corner. So yeah, and, and then Brandon Stevens too. They had him moving around all over. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I don't see them making any moves right now for a um for anybody in the secondary. I agree. You got Brandon Stevens. You got Geo Stone. Unless yeah. somebody get unless somebody get hurt, like Deshaun Elliott is a concussion protocol, but he should mm. be cool to play next week. So yeah, ho hopefully, man. Yeah. So I, I don't see it either. Like I said, we're not working with a ton of cat space either. Mm. So like I said, I think we have like five, four or five million left to play with, if I'm not mistaken. So that's not a ton. That's not a ton of money to get a bunch of people. <laughs> you can see what you always have some money, you know, for a big season in case something happens. That's true. Yeah, it's so a right now we're gonna stay packed. All right, now the last question on this episode of NFL question from subscribers came from my guy, Mac P. He said, ain't Graven, been a while since I dropped the question, but I hope everything is well. Now with the Ravens' big statement win over the Chiefs, how can they use this win to their advantage for their upcoming opponents? We have the Lions, the Broncos, the Colts, the Chargers, and Bengals all coming up, and these are all games I have faith we can win, but how can the Ravens use this Chiefs win for momentum for their upcoming opponents? P.S. Hope all is well. Keep doing your thing, man. I appreciate it, Mac. So, mm, to me, I just think it just, it lets them know, like, hey, we can hang with anybody. We can mess with anybody. We ain't got to be scared of anybody. Um, and, and it just like we were talking about before with the previous question, they not only hung with the Chiefs, but they beat the Chiefs. And they had every reason to get blown out that game. They had every reason to just get dogged that game. Um, but they, they beat the Chiefs and they still had like all these people, what they got like 15 people on injury reserve right now. Yeah. Um, so the, the fact that they still rock with the Chiefs the way that they did and one that 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 gives that's a huge confidence boost, but they still can't sleep on nobody. Absolutely. Any given Sunday. And like we didn't even play our best football for four quarters. We need some mm -hmm. mistakes on both sides of the ball. That could have and probably should have cost us, but we still was able to fight through it. So but if we play a clean four quarter, yeah, we should be we should be fine. Shout out to Graven.